Hi guys, this is part two of my can't deal with the world right now video. Um, it is Tuesday, July the 24th, or is it the 25th? I don't know. Um, yeah, I think I talked about it a little bit on the first video, but I thought I'd expand, expand on it a little bit. Um, right now I feel... Um, that everything has gotten to the point now where I literally only have to go outside when I need to. And I know how people feel because that's why uh, people get a lot of shopping drops at the door because, you know, going into supermarkets and dealing with people can be very dodgy when you've got anxiety. Let's face it, you know, someone looks at you the wrong way. You have to deal with queues, 16 year old, 17 year old, uh, girls and boys at the till, at the till, who really have no clue what they're talking about. Well, we, then you get stuck behind some ignorant bastard, and uh, you're going there for a, like say, a load of some milk and uh, some tea bags, and they've got like two weeks worth of shopping, so you're having to dive to the quick quick aisle. Um, and it's people in general pushing by with push chairs and trolleys. Oh, I hate all our trolleys, push chairs, single mums everywhere you go. Old people, you know. So I think the outside world is uh, is just too much at the moment for me. Um. I'm quite happy with my own company. You know, I can quite easily spend days and days and days on my own with the occasional phone call to see if I'm still alive. <laughs> Are you still alive, Tone? Yeah, I'm still here, unfortunately. <laughs> I have days when I just want to top myself. Do you ever feel like that? You just want to top yourself. You just think, oh, I'm sick of all this struggle. What's the point of it all? <laughs> the same old shit, different pile. <laughs> ah, there's a film there. There's a few films I watch, actually. I recommend you watching a film called The Falcon. Was it Falcon? Fal Falcon Rising with Michael J. White in it. It's a really good film. It's a guy with post-dramatic stress. Um, and uh, I like Michael J. White. He's a good actor. Um, there's another film called The Beaver with uh, Mel Gibson in it. That's a really good film. Again, he talks to his hand, which has a beaver glove on it. And that's how he copes. Then there's another film, I think I mentioned before, called California... Uh, no, it was The King of California with Michael Douglas in it, and that's another good film. All these people have got uh, mental and instability, anxiety issues, but I like it because I can relate to that. You know, one thing I hear about films is people who are doing well, and I like to see the underdog, you know what I mean? I watch a lot of prison films where people are in for all sorts of bullshit, you know what I mean? And uh, that's, that's how I feel a lot of the time. I'm stuck in jail, you know. This is just an open prison for me. <laughs> I suppose an, a home is an open prison, if you think about it. You know, you're allowed to sort of go out, make a bit of money, or do what you've got to do, and then go back again. It almost feels like you've got a tag on your leg. Remember the tags? I don't have to do them anymore. The, the bad boy's bracelet. <laughs> I just can't cope. I think I've got the energy to go out, and then I think, oh, I can't be. I just can't handle this. I just can't handle it. See, the problem is, before I used to do things for people or, or push myself, um, and uh, I used to lose my temper a lot. So all the good that I'd done, all the favors that I did, all went out the window because I lost my temper. Nobody understands me. That's the problem. My mother doesn't understand. My friends don't understand me, and I've 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 just lost all my friends over it and my family, to be honest. 
And I don't want to go around my mother's and she's the shield to think, oh, he's come around to see what he can get. I don't want anything. There's nothing around there that I want. The only thing I really got from there last time was my stepfather's tools, which, you know, she didn't want. She, she's quite happy to pay someone to, to do jobs for her, you know what I mean? He used to go around there a lot and do jobs for her. You know what she said about him? She said, oh, he, he fell out. He fell out with her because she was being bitchy and he had some really nice friends. And she said, oh, he'll come crawling back. This is to a nice guy that used to go around and take her out and uh, do jobs for her for free. He'll come crawling back. That's what my mother said to her. Yeah. That's not nice. I don't like people like that. Whether they're your family or your friends or your work colleagues, you, you just can't, I can't cope with people like that. And they're always got an agenda going on. Always got an agenda going on. They tell you one thing, but the head is somewhere else. I just can't cope with people. I can't cope with the bullshit and the, the, um, the demands. You just want to take their crap and stick it in the bin and just say, oh, I just can't cope with you. Anyway, you know, I was talking about this cottage thing. Eventually, I don't know. See, I was on about renting it out. And then the more I think about it, the more I think, well, it's just going to be too much hassle for me. Um, every week, cut one couple of leaves, I'm going to have to deal with that and then get it nice for the next week. And uh, I, don't know. I just think I'm just going to move in. Fuck it all. Can't be doing with all the hassle. I might get a, down the line I'll get another one and rent it out to a nice couple, but right now I need somewhere proper to live. I don't know. I think that's going to be the easiest thing, but I don't know. But yeah, facing people right now is such a damn uphill struggle. I don't know. And all their bullshit and problems. People should understand you for who you are and not demand anything from you, you know. Oh, that was I was going to talk about. I got sidetracked. If I get this cottage, which I'm hoping to get, um, down the line, we'll, I want all the people who watch this, you are all cordially invited, yes. Um, and you can, st you can just visit. I'll find... You might have to... <laughs> The la any lady can stay on a proper bed. You lads can have the camp beds. <laughs> uh, but yes, if you are. You, you, I will pick you up from Darlington Station and you are all cordially made. You get absolutely sick. Now, Darlington is a main station from the, for, the, for the south and um, it's easy for me to pick anyone up from there. Bring you up, give you some rest, and recuperation. I'm just going to call it the um, anxiety, social anxiety, mis misophonia, post traumatic stress. It's just going to be a rehab centre. Um, so that is definitely would happen. Definitely. It would be nice to know that people that I know could get a few days where they can sit and not hear any noise can just pot around and, and sit in their own thoughts and get their strength back from dealing with a world of noise and bitchiness. Tend the garden. And we'd all be good friends because we're all on the same wavelength. Unlike, and we can all just sit and talk about our life and our lives and all the shit that's gone on. All the shit that's made us be what we are now, turn us it because life has all turned us into complete wrecks. I was maybe normal years ago, and then life just turned me into a complete into a complete car wreck. Get the words out, Tony. Yeah. So I suppose I could say, you know, I'm not recover from what I've been through, which I can't. 
The reason why my parents didn't want to talk to me is because of guilt. They know what I went through. I, there was two people that took it worst, me and my sister. My sister has been looked after. I made sure of that. I fought for her for years for my father's case. And now I've got a really good, She's. Uh, I got a really good settlement when that comes through. So she's getting looked after. I fought like hell for her. Oh, my mother did as well. We all did, but she she's the one that came out with it. And that, for me, was good. Because she, did, she took a lot of crap. But so did I. I just want to be able to get out of it. I took as much shit as her. But anyway, back to... Um, back to just not dealing with people. People are just so difficult. So stressful. I was thinking actually the other day about if I get this cottage, what I might do is uh, get a couple of old caravans, start off with one and just put it on somewhere near the cottage. Depends how much land I get. Probably won't be much because I can't afford much. It'll be a rundown, shitty cottage if I'm lucky. But I don't care. I know someone that'll fix the roof and the gutters. Everything else I can just put up with. I don't care if it's a 1960s kitchen. I don't care if the carpet's a threadbare. I don't care if, if the bathroom is out of the, the fucking 70s or 80s. I'm not bothered. It's, it's where it is. And I really mean what I say. You guys are all invited to come over whenever you need a respite. Definitely. Um, I'm talking to Marco. I'm talking to Sal. I'm talking to Dan and all, and all my other people. Because you guys deserve better. You do. Fuck them people out there that have treated you the way they have. They don't deserve you as friends. I've had people who I thought were friends and were complete bastards. Because all I wanted was was my, was my what can I get off Tony. And of course, I've objected. They've objected. And they've all fallen out. Rather than being decent people. So that's why I'm on my own. Because everybody I ever knew in my life. It's just complete, have been, have been complete bastards, really. <laughs> so I'd rather be on my own and deal with it than be surrounded by so-called, what I did a video about this called Fair Weathered Friends. Uh, but I went over that, so I'm not going to talk about, I'm not going to keep talking about this. But I just can't deal with things at the moment. I think I'm going to do, and then I just go back to the safety of what I know, and Sal knows what I'm talking about. And I really understand where he's coming from. That's why, if, I, if I'm if i in a situation in the future, I'll say, well, if you really want to come around and visit me as a friend, do so at your own pace, at your own time, and there'll always be a place for you. It might be a camp bed. <laughs> But there'll be a place for you, uh, and I mean that sincerely. Um, all the people on this channel, um, you know, respect all you guys, and and I, and I honestly think, like like I said to Marco, you know, he's, he said in a video that he was, you know, it was like Billy Norman. It's well, I'm a friend of his now, so he's got a friend here, even if I'm in Yorkshire. And I like to think all you you guys out there are not just subscribers, but my friends. And it's good that I know that you guys are out there as well. It means a lot to me. Because people with anxiety are a lonely bunch because the rest of the world is on about getting what they want, rolling over everybody else. They put up with, they put up with the friends, they put up with the crappy jokes, and they put up with bad marriages, they put up with bad relationships, they put up with crappy jobs. It's the people with anxiety that have turned around and said, enough's enough. And that's normally got them, that they normally end up on their own because they've got the courage to go and say that to society. And I respect you guys because you've, because you respected yourselves in the end. And that's a really good thing. I don't know what's set, what life's going to throw for me for the next, I don't know this year. I, I want to be able to get something going this year. But at the moment, I just don't have the strength to keep going on with it all. 
So I'm taking every day as it comes, guys. Um, I'm just looking at my greenhouse stuff. I'm just doing me wood, pottering on. Uh, I've got a new TV coming tomorrow, which is really good. Uh, actually, she bought that. Like we kind of did it together, you know what I mean? It's just for the kitchen because the the one in the kitchen is just. It's about 10 years old and it's it's starting to go. And I like watching films in the kitchen while having me healthy meals. Because I really am cutting back on the crap I eat. Um, that's not done me any favours. I guarantee that for nothing. Uh, where's the sun first? I think it's... Uh, I'm going to change this. <coughs> oh, look. My chair's going at an angle now. <laughs> anyway, I'll go this way. So that's uh, how it is at the moment. Um, but no, it hasn't done me any favours, so I'm, I'm really trying to get into a, a healthy... I've almost given up on chips. I've got some pies to eat, but I don't know. I might just put them in the oven tonight and... I can't really have salad or that. I might just have them on their own. I might just have some pies. Pies and peas would be nice. I haven't got any peas. What can you have with pies on their own? I might just have pies. Yeah, yeah. I might just cook them out and just leave them cold and then just have a... No, I don't know. I, don't know. I just can't face chips. Any of that oil. Um really really watching what i eat because I, uh, probably three years ago i was just having chips every day chips every day can you believe it every damn day i was eating chips and i was drinking wine through the day as well and that was because i was going through a lot more pressure i guarantee and that's that's something else and i know mark always buying some of that lovely tea but it wasn't cheap if you come out to a nice quiet place, I guarantee you won't be drinking that. You'll just have normal tea because your stress levels will drop a bit more. But then again, you do need something to keep you calm. And like he rightly said, you can take all the advice in the world, but you've still got to deal with your own shit. And, and uh, I know advice only helps you so far. Um, you've, you know, you have to go through it. You, you know your own self. I, I can proclaim... But I'm, I'm just telling you my story, you know. I'm not going to try and give anyone any, any advice. I'm just telling you how, how I feel it is. But sometimes I feel... I, there's one of the things I hear is a really tidy house. And I don't think my mind is particularly tidy. <laughs> I like a bit of um, chaos which sounds bizarre, but I don't want things to so perfectly clean and tidy because that presents to me orderliness that I'm not used to. And I don't know, perfectly clean, tidy houses mean very boring people. Um, and I think the, more, the people with anxiety, I've, I've got so much, I have a hell of a lot more to talk, a hell of a lot more to talk about than these Boring, pristine people with the new cars and the new furniture and then the fancy boxy houses and the tidy lifestyles. That ain't for me at all. I mean, I'm basically clean and tidy, but I used to be a little bit C or D. But now I'm, I've got knocked all out on the head. I'm like kind of happy living amongst weeds. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I look at that greenhouse now and the sticks there. The thing, I'm, it's basically tidy and that's all I care about. Basically tidy and, you know, I've got all white chairs I'm happy with. I've got all things I'm happy with. I'm happier with my old used stuff than going down and buying. I've got a bed there that's second hand that's 10 years old. It's been in three, four houses, but I'm not going to replace it. Because a new bed won't make me happy. Oh, the sun's coming that way. If you know what I mean. So I'm happy with my older things. I'm comfortable with my older things. 
I'm happy with just, you know, things. I only get things that I need, which I think I need. So, there's a lad. We, uh, it's actually um, his girlfriend. They're moving into a council house and they all want brand new. She wants brand new stuff. She wants a new this, and a new that, and a new that. They can't afford it. They're the Bright House twins, you know. I mean, I get a lot of things. You know, the best things I've ever got are out of the charity shop. Um, these shorts I've got now. Right, this top. This top was free, and these shorts were like out out of eBay for two ninety nine or something. They were second hand. The Crocs I'm wearing were like two quid a pair. They were brand new. But the best things I've ever had are stuff out of charity shops. You know? These glasses were free. But if I buy stuff, I like to buy quality. I don't like to buy shite. I mean, it won't last you. I'm a bit like myself. If, if I'm your friend, I'll be your friend forever, for life. I, I don't just write people off because of one comment or something daft they said or something they did or if the, you know... I'm more, so, I, I, although my mind is all over, I'm, I feel I'm a lot more um, stronger and a more stable person than that, than, that, than these so-called feather fair weather people, you know, because I see life as not black and white. Um, I've got a bee walking towards me, you know, knacker. If you ever see bees, well, you know yourself when bees are crawling along because of the, because they're exhausted, so you just get out of the way. <laughs> um, yeah, so I like to think I'm a bit more stable than the most. Really, I really am. Um, in that department, anyway. So, if I say it, you know, you're a good friend, and I mean it. I'm not just going to say it just to blow smoke up your ass, you know. Do you ever find you chewing on things in the garden? I pretend it's a cigarette. When I was a child, I used to smoke kiddie cigarettes from this the sweet shop. Then you used to get them in little pockets, didn't you? Chocolate cigarettes. Hmm. Bits of grass. So yeah. It's going to be, a, it's a long talk today, but I'm, I'm I've got the mood for a, a long talk. I haven't done a video where it's been longer than 15 minutes, to be honest. Just looking at that bee. It's absolutely knackered. <laughs> so, let's just hope the weather calms down, eh? It's quite warm today, but it's not overly hot here in good old Yorkshire. Um... I've stopped drinking as much coffee as well. I had a mug and a half this morning. Some mornings I, I can drink a lot of coffee. Obviously, if you're getting out to work, then you, you get I I love you, you need your coffee down here, don't you? But the rest of the day I just drink tea. I used to have sugar in my tea. I've knocked all that on the head. I just have a nice pot of Yorkshire tea. That's my favourite. I think lunchtime is my favourite part of the day. I like to watch a bit of TV and. Uh, I make a nice, fresh, healthy sandwich, um, nice pot of tea, and then I throw it all away by having a nice chocolate biscuit. <laughs> I do like chocolate biscuits, though. And look at this bee's eyes. Big bee eyes. He's in the grass now. Yeah, you just got to let them, they, they f let them get on with it. I am fortunate though, I've got some good friends on, 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 on I call you my friends on, on YouTube. Um, and I, I am in a nice position here. And I wish I could invite all you over. Hell, if you wanted to come over to this, this cottage and stay, you are welcome to come here right now. Absolutely. I mean that totally as well. You know. I just want to be able to say, listen, I've got, some, I've found some peace and quiet, and I want to be able to give it, you know, let you guys have a bit of that as well. So, yeah, I think it's nice. Yeah, you can have some of the onions. <laughs> oh, hang on, I'm talking of onions, I might lift some. I don't know. I'll see how the day progresses. 
I was going to go back to bed. I do love bed. I like to get up. I sometimes lay there till midday. I could get up, make make me partner some breakfast because she likes to, she gets up the door about nine, quarter to nine. She was on early this morning, so I just laid in bed till half past ten and then made some coffee. But uh, normally I just get up, make some breakfast, and go back to bed um, because I porridge. I eat porridge every day, and that makes me quite sleepy. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I've got everything I need, but the one thing I do need is just somewhere that's in my own name now. The joint names, I mean, it will be me, with me and my part, obviously, both together. Because she hasn't got a house, not in her name, and it's time she she did. Um, and I'll just be on the, uh, I'll be, 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 be joint owned. So if I die, there's no worries. Awful thing to talk about, but you do think about your own mortality as you're getting older. This piece, uh, it's not really a piece of grass, it's more like a seed. Yes, so like the bee, I'm just resting up and then I might do something this afternoon. Smash a bit of wood up and uh, irritate the neighbors. <laughs> I try to do, uh, whatever kids are off this week hey eh? so you might be getting a bit more noise where you guys are i mean it's all right round here i think i heard one screamy kid this morning but we hardly get any really round here at all it's very peaceful and i would rather have fuck all no fancy furniture fancy car just being somewhere nice and quiet tending the veg making nice home cooked meals for, for me and all my good Social anxiety friends. <laughs> we can drink some homemade wine and chat around the fire and chat in the garden. That would be great for me. Yeah, so I think that's it really. So I'll, because uh, I'm going to be going over me. I don't know how much YouTube will allow me now to download, but I think it's probably a good hour if I wanted to. But I'm going to knock it on the head now. Thanks guys for watching. Catch you later. Oh, it's only 27 minutes. Too bad. A lot of white butterflies floating around.